All right, so I messed up on the previous video by clicking through some of the text before reading it. Um, we are doing the level 65 Red Mage quest since I hit Red Mage 65 yesterday. Uh, yesterday, um, It's called Night Kin, and we're speaking with Zeruntia. I was trying to click out of the text to get to the map to show, to show where I was, but we're in Idleshire. It was, it's kind of stupid that I have to travel all the way back to here because it would have been like 1400 gil to teleport or like 1300 1200 something like that which was insane so if you're like me and you keep your free teleport um in gridania because it was my home nation as a lancer starting out uh it reduced it by half it was like 660 to teleport here so i just did that so <clears throat> since i skipped through i just ended that video immediately this is this is the video i'm actually going to post but I do get to include the text at the beginning that you do not see right now because I already clicked through it. Uh, greetings, Mercy. Arya and I have been wording through a sea of ancient text, but we've yet to finish out, uh, fish out any promising cue cures for her condition. God, if I could speak. All right, now we pick up where we actually are. <laughs> I did, however, recall something which may help narrow down our search. Long ago, Lambard had one particular book which he which he would read with uncommon intensity. I've forgotten the title now, but I do remember that inside were scrawled the memoirs of a deranged killer who was executed as a heretic in Ishgard. This criminal is said to have committed a number of ritualistic murders, all carried out with a most peculiar form of thaumaturgy. I really thought it a vulgar choice of reading material at the time, but now I wonder if that peculiar form of thaumaturgy was what kept Lambard glued to its pages. It sounds positively awful, and it might just give us clues we've been missing. I'll see if I can if I can't track those memoirs down. Well, that was sorry, that was Arya. My bad. Hmm. I understand it's quite a rare volume, and when it comes to hunting down elusive treasures, it may be worth consulting a professional treasure hunter. Mercy, are you acquainted with Midnight Dew? Why don't you take Arya and pay her a visit? I will try my hand at a different route. It's a long shot, but Rowena is known to stock a truly ec uh, eclectic range. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Range of wares. He walks off. Arya gives me a nod. Walks off after him, but she's actually with me. So. She's with me. Alright, Mountain Dew. Or Midnight Dew. Yeah, I fucked you. <laughs> Mountain Dew, that's my fault, obviously. Uh, Kind of a tall Roganin woman with pink hair. I guess all Roganin are pretty tall. Oh, it's you. Something you need? A heretic's memoirs for the young lady here? Bit of an odd request. Who am I, but who am I to judge? Arya, like, waves her hands in front of her face and, like, it's not like that. You, and you explain. Oh, so you're working with Zeruntia, then? Thought you wanted it for some sort of tasteless personal collection. <laughs> Let me know. Let me think now. Ish Guardian Heretic. Ritualistic killings. Oh, hells, it couldn't be. I, she's shocked. I'm shocked. One of my fellow salvagers was just telling the tales of a treasure he'd spied in the great Google Library, a rare book called Nightkin. Claims he glimpsed the title as he was running for his life through Rhapsody's uh, Quadrangle. It is a sought-after tome for collectors of the macabre, uh, said to be written by an Ishgardian murderer who believed himself some manner of demon, half a, dare, half a diary, half a grimoire, and chock, chock full of bloody lunacy. Well, it certainly fits the description. We should we should head back to Rowena's and share the news with Zeron. Thank you for your help, Midnight. Are you bows? Mid or curtsies? Midnight waves, and we are oh back to where we just were. I thought we had to go to that witch Rowena, way down south. Not like way way, but way. You know what I'm saying? Yes, Nightkin. That was the title. Written by a killer who thought himself born of fiends, such a brief, uh, such a belief would certainly brand him a crazy heretic in Ishgard. But I suspect the truth is he was much like Lambard, a mage who delved too deeply into forbidden arts. And you say the book was seen in the Great Google Library? I've not encountered that place since the Charlians departed this land. What of you, Mercy? Yeah, I've been there a couple times. Yeah. Like the back of your hand, eh? Well then, I vote for you to be our guide. Hmm. I hadn't known the library's guardians had turned hostile. I'm sorry, Arya, uh, but you will have to remain behind. No sense putting you in a situation where you might be forced to fling spells. Oh, I would have liked to have seen those fabled shells, but you're right, of course. Come, Mercy, let us hurry through the hinterlands ere some intrepid scavenger makes way with our prize. 
Arya gives us like a interesting curtsy. Like a hand to her head thing. <sighs> Are we just going to... Alright. I can fly there, though. So. I, I mean, in this zone. I can fly in this zone. Yeah, bitches! Chat as wolf! We will fly over the magical dome of Alexander. Which I am happy that, you know, this playthrough around, I took the time to do some plus quests, which is kind of why I've been doing more plus quests, and found that they led to the raid, the series of raids uh, of Alexander. And kind of the story behind this massive, I'm going to say Eidolon, although that might not be the right word anymore, but this just gigantic freaking summon, I think he was, I think he's technically summoning magic made manifest and permanent. I forgot. <laughs> if he isn't, uh, I apologize. Just don't strangle me. Never find me, coppers. I don't know. Just say words sometimes. Okay. Alright, Zerun, where are ya? Right here? Alright. Okay, we actually have a... Uh, yeah, we're gonna get in some trouble, apparently. Right, let's not dwaddle once we're inside. We make straight for Rhapsody's Quadrangle and leave as soon as we're, we've acquired the tome. From what I remember, the book Lambard would read was, a, was of a fair thickness and bound in leather covers. Hopefully it will not be too difficult to find. And level 67 capped, sync isn't... Sync is in effect. Words. It's nice I don't have to queue for it. There are some glowing books in the ground. There's more layer than library now. Lead the way, my friend. Oh yeah, you guys are Oh, should I should have turned away. Oh no, it was just a... Okay. Zeron, can you fucking kill it now? Dude, you're doing like no damage to that guy. Thank you. What happens if I run into some glowing book piles? Okay, the tall ones are actually, you know, physically there. You can't run into them. I mean, you can't run through them, but the glowing books in the ground. And yeah, tall, tall walls, shelves and shelves and shelves and shelves and shelves of books. Boys, let's do this. I'll say boys very Should I heal myself? You can't you can't keep up with me? You can, okay. I probably just shouldn't have attacked everything all at once. Maybe I should not focus on AoE. Why can't you guys get in the AoE? I understand the desire to protect. Oh, deep red Zerantia. I understand the desire to protect one's collection, but these guardians seem a touch overzealous. Right, we got a few books here. Let's just AOE them down, shall we? They look like mimics, mimic books. Heal me. Oh, your heal is so much better than mine. I'll focus on DMD. DMD. DMD? DD? Damage dealing? Whatever the freaking words are. For life. I don't know. Life and words are both hard. But yeah, books with teeth. Lots of teeth. 
my, my manic books, basically. I'm just gonna single target. So we've gone down some stairs. Oh wait, let's use this. Oh, we didn't pull the the logos, the giant armor guy. Cool. I'll use my melee rotation on him in a second here. Maybe not. No, I'll use that one. Red Mage AoE rotation is just so mana taxing and also extremely boring. Which is fine for the boring part, but the mana taxing part is just you don't get it back easily. You cannot. Here we are now to find that book. Oh, wait, I, I reached uh, the quadrangle is up ahead. Just a little further now. That's what I missed. All right, we're looking for a big. Oh, these are just piles of books. Okay, so I guess there's no way to, to discern which might be the right one. All right, let's just. In the year 960 of the Sixth Astral Era, a murder did occur wherein a member of the clergy was struck down by a knight of common birth. The knight, whose name was Ta Trif Trifaniel, wet his blade in the priest's blood after wi after witnessing the unspeakable abuse of an orphan waif under the presence, I'm sorry, under the pretense of an exorcism. May his conviction in the face of corrupted faith be praised. Okay. Not the book you're looking for. The pages contain incredibly detailed pictures of female deities in various stages of undress. No male di divinities appear to be included in this collection. No, not that one. The tome we seek is titled The Nightkin. Yeah, I'm, I can't... Yeah. During the, the Thorn Dynasty, a series of unsolved killings shook the very foundations of Uldah. The murderer was so named for the practice of leaving a card from the deck of Arcana by the bloody bodies of the slain. Officials publicly suggested that the murderer selected targets based upon divination, as several key figures of a faction that opposed the royal house were prominent amongst the victims. However, it was whispered that the seemingly random slaughter was merely a cover for political assassinations. I read that with a wrong emphasis, but all the correct, all the stuff is still, still there. All the words and info. The ink is faded to the point of illegibility. No, not this one either. Try another. You needn't, you needn't read every, every page, my friend. I'm not doing that. Today I visited the Twelveswood. Lady Amandine of the uh, Dar Ten Corps, a regular patron of mine, bid me call upon her household. I set off with confidence, my latest masterpiece in hand, but it was within the walls of Hawk Manor that I beheld the true pinnacle of perfection. This is also Diary of a Goldsmith, by the, way, by the way. Hello. The ever living bibliotaph. I think this is one of the bosses that you face. Yeah, it is. Big old, like, book. A book as its torso. But otherwise, buff, buff like human arms and legs. Although, I guess kind of constructy more than human. Like a golem, golem more than it is um, anything. Magic burst. She's got an AOE that Zarun is going to be in the middle of. Oh, Zarun's doing this back and forth thing. Wait, fuck. Why am I getting hurt by? Why am I too close to that sphere? Okay, I can, I can take that. That's fine. It calls forth more of its ilk. Step in the circles to break the summons. Oh, shit. I'm not going to get to all of them in time. We got three. Has everyone got one more? Nate, he only got yeah, one more. So, here we got one. Heal me, bud. Zarin. Thank you. off my combo, because I have a dash and a backpack. Jeez. You 
take me down. You interrupted me? What the fuck? It's not nice. He's got a large, like, out, outer, like, um, get out of melee range AoE, and then a, like, an outer ring AoE. As you might expect by bastards. Hey, I happened to back jump before the AoE came off, so. No need to stop any, um,. Ooh, he dropped a bomb. No, pile of books. Wait, wait. The bookish behemoth, but the bookish behemoth has fallen, and it appears a prize was hid within its belly. I am the descendant of demons. This is called Nightkin, by the way. A sign of tainted blood it is for my brethren born into darkness. For the Nightkin that I pen these word, these words. Blah. The holy men will insist my teachings are madness, the ravings of a deranged killer. But you shall learn that all I scribe henceforth is eldritch truth, and their faith a twisted lie. Yes, we found it. There can be no mistake. Yeah, bud, we got it. We didn't tarry in this place. I have breathed my fill of moldy parchment. Right outside the library. Library. You did well in there, Mercy. I've never known acquiring a book from a library to be such a strenuous endeavor. May I see the tome? Of course, bud. Nightkin. Nightkin! You and me, baby. That's head games. How did I get... Okay, whatever. Yes, the author does certainly seem convinced of his demonic heritage. I can see how the clergy of the, to of the, of the time would have passed these writings off as a heretic's delusion. But the spellcraft contained within it is aught but incoherent rambling. Within his memoirs, this mage has provided specific instructions on the workings of forbidden sorcery. Little wonder that Lambard spent so much of his time studying the tome's secrets. But there is more, much more. Let us return to Idleshire. Arya needs to hear this. Idleshire 167. We go up the steps, into the building, over to the Arya, and talk to the Zarin. I've just finished slogging through the last pages of the Nightkin. There were truths I discovered which made it difficult to continue, but amongst a, a mounting sense of horror, I found hope. Thus I bid you listen until the end of my tale. I shall begin with the author himself. I'm the one that's the talk. So it's your tale in my words, right? Oh, no, it's a, it's a cutscene where he's explaining... Oh, no. And so this man who wrote the Nightkin was not merely some disturbed killer, but a mage who had mastered the arts of the ancients? Exactly so. A century ago in Ishgar, this monster in mortal guise devoured all manner of forgotten texts, teaching himself everything from red magic to machi summoning rituals. It was M-H-A-C-H-I. The secret to his seemingly inexhaustible power lies in his bloodline. He was directly descended from Machi Archmag Archmagus, Archmagus, however you want to do that, but I think it's Archmagus, who had ingested the lifeblood of, of the void sent Queen Lilith. Oh, wow. In fact, it was with this very Archmag Archmagus, <laughs> Archmagus that the vile practice of infusing oneself with void sent blood first began. Oh, that was The word was blood when my voice cracked. I believe I told you how the Red Mages later outlawed these rituals. But the damage had already been done. Lilith's insidious energies had been passed on to the Archmagus's heirs. Uh, this clan of ether drinking spellcasters became known as those who were born into darkness, the Nightkin. The revelation which truly shook me, however, was yet to come. I discovered that Lambart is, was, a sign of the Nightkin, can, uh, sorry, a scion of the Nightkin clan. And quite likely, so are you, Arya. She's shocked, I'm shocked. The book's author was of the uh, Callowise family, a surname shared by Lambard. With no small amount of trepidation, I determined to look once more into your family records and learn that the Callowise name was also prevalent on your mother's side. This can be no coincidence. Are you saying that Voidsent blood runs in my veins? It explains your preternaturally strong affinity for black... 
Did I say that right? Preternaturally strong affinity for black magics. When I remember that Lambard was of a similar arcane disposition, the connection is even more obvious. He had no need to ingest, fiend ingest fiendish blood. He simply awoke the corruption which had always lurked within him. The rituals for doing so were clearly described in the pages, pages of the Nightkin. <clears throat> were these rituals performed upon me too? Again, it is doubtful considering their complex requirements. My theory is that your latent talents were stirred into wakefulness quite by accident, through your introduction into the ranks of the Red. I wonder, how, however, why the same awakening that took years for Lambert occurred so swiftly in you. An innate affinity, mayhap? Whatever the case, that this unstable condition was triggered by your desire for control certainly explains Lambert's parting barb about the injustice of your fate. She still kind of shook. But all, but all is not lost. There is a way to undo the curse of your lineage. The first Kalawais drew Lilith into our physical world by, by providing a mortal host for her soul to possess. He stood unflinching before the fiendish queen he had summoned and forged with her a bargain of blood and darkness. Once the Arch Magus had partaken of her essence, however, he entrapped her inside a heavily glyphed box. His material form... Her material form thus captured, Lilith was unable to return to her shadowy realm. It was written that her imp imprisonment on this plane of existence was a necessary act, lest the potency of her blood begin to wane. Do you understand what this means, Arya? I think so. The corruption inside me will last only as long as the Void Sent Queen remains in our world. Oh, I see. We need to find that box and banish Lilith back into the Void. Exactly right. Defeat the Void Scent and the curse upon your blood is lifted. Of course, a creature of Lilith's stature would ordinarily present a near insurmountable challenge. We are fortunate, then, that the summoner bound her essence to a feeble vessel to prevent her from manifesting her full power. Even we few should stand a chance against, her lesser, against this lesser incarnation. Now, it appears the author succeeded in tracking down Lilith's prison, and though the book makes no mention of the event, it is entirely possible that the book, the box, passed into his possession. Our surest bet will be to follow in his footsteps. Rest and prepare, my friends. We have an exciting adventure ahead of us. Alright, Nightkin is complete. There is no reward aside from experience points in Gil. Definitely making up for the Gil I've spent on this quest. And, yeah, the next Red Mage quest will be at level 50, 68. I will see you guys next time. Thank you for stopping by.